On the bench today, we have a Yezu FT840. It had a flashing display. Yezu, the 840, with a flashing display. I'd already got it fixed, but I want to explain what I found so that if uh, anyone else has a problem, they have an idea of what to look for. So the, what I, uh, first thing I did was hook it up to the signal generator and see if I had receive. I had no receive. So that indicated a PLL problem, which the flashing display would indicate a PLL lockout. So what I found was on this side of the radio was this crystal up in this corner uh, came loose from the board. You couldn't see where the crack was without a magnifying glass because it was cracked around the posts both posts you had to look in real close with a magnifying glass but that's where the problem was it wasn't getting its 34 megahertz through the uh mixer chip here we had our frequency from our tcxo coming in but not the 34 megahertz coming in, so we were getting no signal through this section here. I'll show you on the schematic and what led me in the direction towards this crystal. Okay, first, uh, the, after I checked to make sure I didn't have receive, and uh, what I did is I went to the alignment procedure. And down here, I did my reference oscillator check which I had my 5.242880 megahertz. So everything aligned there and it was uh, tuned within uh, what it needed to be. And then I went on to the DSS-1 check and I had my 110 millivolts here at this point. Then I moved on to the DS2 check, DS, DDS2 check. And I was okay there at 65 megahertz, or millivolts. Then I went on to the PLL bandpass builder and found I had nothing. Uh, it says to adjust uh, T2001 through 3 alternately several times to peak the RF voltage to at least 190 millivolts. Well, I wasn't able to do anything. Not, they weren't doing anything at all. So, I came to the schematic. Here's... 2001 uh, coil 2 and 3 so coming off of these test point two, 201 is where we were testing we were getting nothing at that point so we back I backed it up to the other side of the coil here which came to this chip right here which is a mixer which is a mixture chip so I checked uh, test point 202 I had frequency had a a frequency on 202 but I didn't have on pin 2 uh, frequency because it comes off of pin 1 comes out and over I had all my voltages I was supposed to have but I didn't have an AC voltage which I did on 3 off of test point 2 but I didn't have my frequency over here to the 34 megahertz crystal over here so I checked the uh, frequency see if I had AC frequency at this point I didn't at this transistor that's what led me to this crystal to now I checked to see if it was grounded see if uh, for some reason one of these capacitors were shorted out same here so I found that this crystal was not, had come unsoldered, the post had uh, oh, cracked and became unsoldered. So I resoldered that crystal into place, cleaned it off and resoldered it. So if you uh, run across one that has a flashing display, check uh, for cracked solder joints on this board. Take and get yourself uh, your oscilloscope. 
take and read the alignment procedures. See if you've got your frequency from your TCXO at your different test points. See if you've got uh, frequency coming off of your three coils here going to the VCO. If not, check the mixer down here. See if you've got both your frequencies. The frequency from your TCXO, the frequency from your crystal. See if you have those. If you got both those, then continue on with your uh, alignment procedure, and you may have to do some other alignments. But other than that, that took care of the problem in this one. So that one's a, just a short video. I hope uh, at least explaining what I found helps someone. So please like and subscribe. It would definitely help. I am trying to get to 500 subscribers and uh, 3,000 viewing hours. It's been almost a year. Haven't been able to do it yet. But uh, hopefully I will. So you and all have fun. We'll catch you in the next one.